Howdy folks, hope you're all having a good one, and welcome back to a game of throws in World of Warships with Rear Admiral Jingles. You know, the thing I love about this series is that, well, you can kind of break the throws down into two main types. Actually, no, make that three. The first, and often the most exciting, is when you just can't tell where the throw's coming from. Throm? <laughs> the throw. <laughs> English is really hard, okay? Um, <laughs> the first is where you can't tell where the throw is coming from right up until it happens. Usually at the last second, where somebody makes a decision so incredibly stupid, so pants-on-head idiotic, that it, it's, it's not really so much a case of trying to figure out what they were thinking, but trying to figure out whether or not they were actually thinking at all, uh, and seals the outcome of the match. This is not one of those battles. The second type of throw is where both teams are trying just as hard to throw throughout the entire duration of the match, with one team looking like they've managed to throw it before the other team steps up and does something even more stupid. And this can often seesaw between both teams throughout the entire battle. And again, can be very, very exciting and entertaining to watch. This is not one of those battles either. The third and final type of throw is the one that gets telegraphed really, really early on, where you can see the mistake well in advance of the outcome of the battle. A mistake that is so glaringly obvious, or should be so glaringly obvious, that anybody on the enemy team could do something about it, and yet somehow they never do. Well, I say the enemy team. There's nothing stopping your own team from committing this type of error as well, and they very, very often do. This is one of those battles where the entertainment value is in the grim inevitability of watching a team that could absolutely at any point do something to prevent their defeat and yet somehow they just never seem to figure it out. I'll make sure to let you know the point at which I realised that the enemy team had already thrown this match. Be sure to let me know if you spot it happening earlier. Anyway. This is Explorer in the French Tier 10 destroyer, the Marceau. It's an airship escort battle, and even though Explorer doesn't actually realise it yet, although he's about to figure it out, he does already have a bit of a problem, because while he's shooting up the enemy Christopher Columbus over there, he is detected with an island between him and the enemy Christopher Columbus, which means the Christopher Columbus isn't one spotting him, which means Explorer has a destroyer problem, and any destroyer is going to be a big problem for the Marceau, as long as the Marceau cannot see that enemy destroyer. Spotted enemy destroyers are usually not a problem for this ship because it has extremely powerful guns, but unspotted destroyers, and when your stealth is as bad as the Marceau's is, most of them are going to be unspotted. He's backing up here now because, yep, suspected torpedoes. Five torpedoes, one of them clipped the island, that's the Shimakaze. That's really bad news because the Shimakaze outspots basically everything. I mean, it's not difficult to outspot the Marceau. Uh, it's basically a light cruiser rather than a destroyer, but the Shimakaze will be a particular problem. And if the Shimakaze player is smart, oh, there's a second wave of torpedoes, th this isn't an issue. The Marceau is extremely fast. I mean, the Shimakaze is pretty fast as well, but if the Shimakaze player is smart, and there's some friendly radar, which unfortunately was too far away, so it looks like the Shimakaze player is smart, he's going to be next to impossible to detect and can just keep Explorer lit up for the other enemy ships down to the south. And it is here where the Shimakaze makes his first massive error of judgement. There is absolutely no way he should have gotten spotted by the Marceau. He definitely took his eye off the ball there. But he instantly drops smoke, turns away and starts running. And while the Shimakaze isn't quite as fast as the Marceau, it's still pretty damn fast. And he's got friendly teammates not that far away who can cover him. Fortunately for Explorer, the second the Shimakaze broke contact, he also went unspotted. Unfortunately for Explorer, <laughs> oh, oh, that was tight. <laughs> the Shimakaze did still have one torpedo launcher left. But his final and fatal error of judgment was not continuing to run. He clearly didn't expect that Explorer would charge him down, and that is not a mistake that he's going to survive. So, Explorer's first kill. 
And with the death of the enemy Shimakaze, he is once again undetected. Even though he's got line of sight on the Christopher Columbo over there, it's using its high-speed smoke and it can't see out of it. And of course the Shimakaze has left a very, very nice smoke screen of its own. The Marceau doesn't get a smoke screen generator. It really would be rude not to use it. So, initial emergency over. Let's just focus on what's happening at the other end of the map. Because it's at this point where I realised, despite the losses that are stacking up on Explorer's team, I mean they've already lost four ships and the only casualty on the enemy team so far is that Shimakaze. But it was more or less this point where I thought to myself, the enemy team are throwing this game already. And in order to explain how I came to that conclusion, I'm going to have to explain how airship escort works. Because this is an airship escort battle. So. First thing you might notice is that there's no score at the top of the screen. Despite the fact that uh, Explorer's team are already down four ships, it doesn't actually matter that much. I mean, it's not good because it kind of looks like Explorer's team are throwing the match. But it's not affecting the score because there isn't one. Instead, at the top of the screen, you can see speed indicators for the two airships. Whichever airship makes it to the exit point first wins regardless of how many ships are left alive. Now you can influence the speed of both of the airships by getting ships from your team inside the influence circle, the green circle, around the friendly airship. An explorer's team are doing that. Their airship is moving at 30 knots, which is as fast as it will go. But you can also influence the speed of the enemy airship by getting your ships into its influence circle, the red circle, in this case, on the minimap. And Explorer's team are also doing that. There's a U-2501 who has basically slowed the enemy airship down to its minimum speed of six knots. Now that's very important. You cannot stop an airship, but you can slow it down to a maximum of six knots. You need to remember that because it's going to be very important later. So those are the ground rules. There's only two ways of winning or losing an airship escort battle. There are no capture points. There's no score. So technically it doesn't really matter that the enemy team are currently kicking Explorer's team's ass six different ways to Sunday. Because as long as there's at least one ship left alive on his team, and your airship is moving faster than their airship, you're still gonna win. And at the moment, with just that U-2501 slowing the enemy airship down to 6 knots, it's going to take 22 minutes for the enemy team to win, and there's only 12 minutes of this battle left. On the other hand, with just the friendly Yugamo speeding up the friendly airship, despite the increasing losses that Explorer's team is suffering, the friendly airship is going to reach the exit point and win the game in slightly more than 2 minutes. So all of these enemy ships, and there must be at least 10 of them, <laughs> <laughs> All of these guys, none of them are playing the objective. That's what's important here. And Explorer's team are. So despite the fact that Explorer's team have already lost six ships and only inflicted two casualties, they are actually winning. Unless you can kill everybody on the enemy team in an airship battle, the kills don't actually matter. It's almost as if the enemy team don't actually realise that they're playing an airship escort battle. Now, things could be about to start getting very, very dicey for the friendly Yugamo, who is currently escorting the friendly airship, because if you look at the paths that the two airships take on the map, when they enter this final stretch towards the exit point, the paths of the two airships converge, which means the Yugamo has to get dangerously close to all of these ships on the enemy team, in particular the two radar cruisers, the Alaska and the Puerto Rico. But the Alaska and the Puerto Rico have already used their radar, and not to expose the position of the Yugamo and force him out of the friendly airship's influence circle. They have used it to try to spot and get Explorer here killed, and what Explorer is doing is almost completely inconsequential. It doesn't matter, because Explorer isn't playing the objective. The Yugamo and the friendly U-2501 are. Now, while it's true that the Yugamo has just been forced to abandon his escort of that friendly airship, it was nothing to do with the use or misuse 
of the radar on the Alaska or the Puerto Rico is due to the, well, the Conqueror there and the Tirpitz B getting as close as they did, forcing the Yugamo to break off and attempt to stealth up. And the Conqueror is now inside the influence circle of the friendly airship, so it has now been slowed down to six knots. But the enemy airship, thanks to the friendly U-2501, who has pretty much spent this entire game cock-blocking the enemy airship, is also only doing six knots. And remember, you can't stop an airship. All you can do is slow it down. So even with the Conqueror slowing down the friendly airship, the Explorer's team is still going to win in slightly more than two minutes. And there's almost ten minutes of this battle left. Now, Explorer's team are down to four surviving ships. Actually, the Yugamo just died to the Turbots B secondaries. Make that three surviving ships against nine enemies. They are outnumbered three to one. But there's no score. So you're not in any danger of getting zero pointed here. It's an airship escort battle. The kills don't actually matter unless you can wipe out the entire enemy team. The U-2501 just went down, and that guy has absolutely been the MVP in this battle because he has spent the entire game slowing down and cock-blocking the enemy airship, and it is now so far behind. Even though its speed has now just doubled up to 12 knots, actually 30 knots, it's still going to take it three minutes to get to the exit point. And even though there's now at least two enemy ships slowing down the friendly airship, you can only slow it down, you cannot stop it. It's still doing six knots, and it's so close to the exit point. It's going to get there in one minute. Unless the enemy team kill everybody. An explorer hadn't even realised this until somebody pointed it out to him in chat and said, uh, just run. As long as one of us is still alive, we've got this. That one person is not going to be the Hindenburg. As he's just gone down, which means Explorer is now alone against nine enemies. But he doesn't have to fight them. He just has to not die. And he's in a Mars so, and while it doesn't have a smoke screen, and it's not particularly stealthy with the engine boost running, it will do, let's see, oh there's 53 knots, and it's still accelerating. <laughs> nothing, nothing alive on the enemy team that can catch him. So all he has to do at this point, is nothing. And there's the win. And I saw that one coming. He's even shooting now. Here I am. Too late for you to do anything about it. <laughs> oh, he's going to get style points for that one. But I saw that one coming seven minutes ago. Because, well, the U2501 up there, definitely the MVP in this battle, was playing the objective, as was the friendly Yugamo. An explorer wasn't, but he did manage to sucker at least 10 members of the enemy team into not playing the objective while fruitlessly trying to kill him instead. It turns out that playing the objective is actually quite important. Wow, who'd have thought? And on that bombshell, that's it for today. I hope you've enjoyed this episode of A Game of Throws. I hope you're all having a great day. And as always, take care, and I'll catch you next time.